In this video, I will show you what I think is the best solution to your storage needs in terms of price, capacity, and performance. Let's go! Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Joe, and if you're watching this video, you probably know that you need more storage on your new Apple Silicon Mac. And you probably also know that upgrading the internal storage is very expensive. So for all intents and purposes of this video, we will assume that you already have decided on how to configure your new Mac or that you already have your Mac with you. So the SSD that I chose was the Western Digital SN770 with a capacity of 2 terabytes. I chose this SSD because it was the most affordable one that I could find that also had a near perfect 5 star rating, 4.8 stars to be exact. Western Digital is also a well-known brand. Now, I will show you the real speeds that you can expect in your Mac in just a minute, but I wanted to take this opportunity to mention that there is a newer version that costs only $10 more and is a lot faster, at least in theory. It is the SN850X and its maximum rated transfer speed is over 7,000 megabytes per second. Yeah. Now, you can choose this one instead of the SN770 if you want, but I suggest you do so only if you intend to use this NVMe in another system later. For example, if you plan to use it on a PC that you might be building sometime in the future. This is because when using the SN850X on an enclosure on your Mac, it's going to have the same exact performance as the SN770 that I am recommending. Also, the SN770 can sometimes be found cheaper. I actually bought it for 150 US dollars. As for the enclosure, I chose this one made by Acasis because it was the only one that I could find that met all the criteria that I was looking for. It had to be Thunderbolt or USB 4 for the fastest speeds possible. I wanted it to have compatibility with all USB-C ports. I wanted it to have a metal build for good durability and heat dissipation. I know it's objective, but I wanted to have good looks. And of course, I wanted the best possible price. Speaking of which, I will link all the items mentioned in this video down in the description. If you buy from these links, I will get a commission at no extra cost to you. And you will still get the best price possible. That's a good deal. Alright, so let's move on. Setting up the SSD in the enclosure is very straightforward. Basically, you unscrew the lid with included screwdrivers, you slide the NVMe in, you screw it in place, you apply a thermal path, and you screw the lid back on. Then, you plug the enclosure into a USB 4 port in your Mac. If you have an M1 Max Mac Studio like I do, only the four ports in the back are USB 4, so plug the disk into any one of those four ports in the back. For the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, as well as the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs, you can use any of the USB-C ports and you should be just fine. Once plugged in, macOS will complain that the disk is unreadable. Don't worry, we just have to set it up. Ok, so first click on Initialize. If this utility doesn't start automatically, you can open it yourself through Spotlight by hitting Command Space and then typing this utility, then press Enter. In this utility, select your NVMe drive which will be listed under External. You will easily recognize the name of the NVMe you bought, just like mine says WD underscore black SN770 2TB media. With the NVMe selected, click on Erase. In the pop-up, type a name for your external storage. I named mine WD underscore 2TB, but you can name it anything you want. Just keep it simple, ok? For the format, select APFS if you intend to use this only with Mac computers. However, if you intend to connect your SSD to both Mac and Windows computers interchangeably, then select XFAT. Next, click on Erase. You'll see a lot of text as the SSD is initialized, but it should be done in just a couple of seconds. Now you're all set. It is really that easy. Now we're ready to test the speed of our new SSD. I first did a speed test of the internal SSDs, you know, to get a baseline. As you can see, my Mac Studio with a 1TB internal SSD averages 4800MB per second when writing and 5300MB per second when reading. The SN770 in the Cassis enclosure reaches transfer speed that average about 2700 megabytes per second for both read and write. As mentioned before, the upgraded version, which is the SN850X, transfers at this same exact speed. This means that there is no benefit to choosing the faster NVMe because the Cassis enclosure caps the transfer speed at 2700 megabytes per second. In case you're wondering, I did search around a lot and this was the fastest that I could find. Do let me know if you happen to know of a faster enclosure. I know this may not sound impressive at all if you compare it to the speeds of the internal SSD. However, 
To give you some perspective, I moved over 177 gigabytes of video files from the internal SSD to the SN770 in less than a minute. That's insane! In another test, I transferred over 13 gigabytes of video files in less than 4 seconds. So, sure, the Acasis enclosure may not reach the NVMe's rated speeds, but even so, this is likely more than enough for almost any workflow. For example, for video editing, I know for a fact that a drive with a transfer speed as slow as 750 megabytes per second will let you edit 4K video with little to no hiccups. Mostly little hiccups. In fact, this solution is roughly 1000 megabytes faster than the internal SSDs on the base model Macs with M2 processors. So there you have it. In my opinion, the Western Digital SN770 in the Acasis enclosure is the best bang for your buck when it comes to storage for your Mac computer. For 2TB of storage, you can save up to $300 if you choose the base storage on an M2 Pro Mac Mini and up to $500 US if you choose the base storage on any regular M2 Mac. Well, this is it for now. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, show me some love by hitting that like button. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or any suggestions. And if you want my recommendations on how to configure your new M2 Mac Mini computer for the best value, I will link that video right here when it is available, which should be pretty soon. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, may God bless you all.